Zimbabwe has emerged from a very difficult political situation and uh, they've now held their recent elections which went well but they still have sanctions that many countries around the world have imposed on them. Uh, we've been some of those who've been calling on the world to uh, relax the sanctions or lift the sanctions altogether so that Zimbabwe can begin to operate in an economic manner with the capabilities that it has. They are currently facing serious, serious economic challenges and they can be assisted by the world if those sanctions are lifted. But at the same time, yes, they are having discussions with us as South Africa about the economic challenges that they are facing. We are involved in serious discussions to see how best any form of assistance can be made available to Zimbabwe. We have not yet reached conclusion. We've had the Minister of Finance on our side and the Governor of the Central Bank uh, getting involved in their counterparts on the Zimbabwean side. And uh, President Munangagwa and myself will meet at a later stage to see what is possible. I'm not able to say whether you know, the change of their monetary uh, currency would be the silver bullet that they need or not. It is something that they themselves will need to consider because they did change their monetary currency and dollarized it and uh, that may or may not be working so well for them. So those are some of the issues that we need to continue engaging in. But the world that has imposed sanctions against Zimbabwe would be even more helpful if those sanctions were to be lifted because then Zimbabwe's economy could then begin to recover. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has called for sanctions on Zimbabwe to be lifted. They still have sanctions that many countries around the world have imposed on them. Uh, we've been some of those who've been calling on the world to relax the sanctions or lift the sanctions altogether so that Zimbabwe can begin to operate in an economic manner with the capabilities that it has. They are currently facing serious, serious economic challenges and they can be assisted by the world if those sanctions are lifted. Well, Ramaphosa went on to say the two countries are discussing measures, including a bailout package to address the economic crisis. Zimbabwe's government has been accused of a brutal crackdown during protests over a rise in fuel prices. The country's Human Rights Commission accuses the security forces of systematic torture. The US, the UK, European Union and other states have imposed sanctions against Zimbabwe over rights abuses during former President Robert Mugabe's time in office. Online, there's been sharp criticism of the South African president's comments with accusations he's out of touch. He speaks of sanctions, but nothing about corruption. He says nothing about the black-on-black -black violence that's going on in Zimbabwe right now. He speaks of a bailout package with no conditions. No conditions, no economic reforms required. No. What about the human rights violations, Mr. Ramaphosa? What do you stand for? Because right now you look like you're just part of that sadic brotherhood who are only interested in benefiting from the system. Our society remains dysfunctional. And all you people are concerned about is being able to control the people and to benefit from the resources. So we're seeing similar sentiment on Twitter. Zimbabwean opposition politician and lawyer David Coltart says Ramaphosa's statement was exceptionally disappointing. The root of our problems is the willful disregard for Zimbabwe's constitution by the Munangagwa regime. We discussed the matter of uh, other countries in our region, particularly Zimbabwe, and called upon the EU to review its position on Zimbabwe with regard and to move towards lifting whatever sanctions they might still have on Zimbabwe because Zimbabwe is on a path of great reforms and we insisted that this needs to be supported as Zimbabwe has turned a wonderful corner. To ensure that no country is left behind, we reiterate our position as the African Union that economic sanctions against Zimbabwe and Sudan 
should be lifted to allow their governments to respond adequately to the pandemic. We've been very clear as South Africa, and we've made the call, as we said earlier, internationally, in whatever international fora that we've had occasion to participate in, that the sanctions that have been leveled against Zimbabwe are unfair, they are unjust, and the time has now come for those sanctions to be lifted. And in fact, we have been calling for those sanctions to be lifted immediately because they impede the growth of the Zimbabwean economy and they also are having an adverse effect on the ordinary people of Zimbabwe. And we want those sanctions to be lifted, in fact, yesterday and not tomorrow. In this regard, there is also an urgent need. We've argued and stressed for economic sanctions against Sudan and Zimbabwe to be lifted in order to provide the necessary space for these countries to devote their resources towards fighting against the COVID-19 virus. U.S. President Donald Trump says sanctions against Zimbabwe will stay in place despite the changes in government in that country. The decision was announced in a letter to Congress. President Trump's letter notes the November 2017 change in government after former President Robert Mugabe's resignation, saying it offered an extraordinary opportunity for Zimbabwe to set itself on a new path that could allow for re-engagement with Washington. But like several United States senators who held a hearing on Zimbabwe late last year, the Trump administration remains skeptical. Zimbabwe has a new president, uh, but the critical questions of whether the new government reflects material change from Mugabe's decades of rule and what path uh, Zimbabwe is likely to take under President Monongagwa, these are things still left unsettled. He'd been closely allied with President Mugabe since Mugabe's rise to power. He stands accused of orchestrating a string of massacres in the early 1980s uh, to consolidate Mugabe's power. Uh, leaving as many as uh, 20,000 people dead in Matabili land. Most importantly, a view shared by colleagues across the aisle. I'm concerned that despite the promises made by President Mungawa the, to rooting out corruption, to having free and fair elections, and to overseeing an inclusive government, there is simply not yet enough proof that this regime will be any different than the one before. President Trump has called for concrete actions on the political and economic front by President Emerson Mnangagwa, who will mark 100 days in office on Tuesday. You don't build Rome within 100 days, uh, but within 100 days, you should be able to set a foundation uh, for a clear strategy uh, of for turning around the economy, resuscitating the economy, rebuilding the economy. And regrettably, with uh, Emerson Mnangagwa, he has failed and failed absolutely uh, to set and put a fingerprint, a footprint uh, in, the, in the economy. And part of his problem was that he actually did not have a plan. He actually did not have a strategy. The United States president says that in response to persisting threats on these fronts, he has determined that it's necessary to continue to maintain the punitive measures. Nangagwa, some army generals and other top officials are all targeted by measures for alleged human rights abuses and previous election rigging. Sherman Bryceby's SABC News, New York. Sanctions must go. Remove them now.